Here I have another differential equation that we're going to try to solve with the Laplace transform. So, if we remember our steps, step one is to actually take the Laplace transform of both sides. So, if we take the Laplace transform of both sides of our equation, in this case, we get that the Laplace transform, again breaking apart by linearity, so the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 6 times the Laplace transform of 6y, or excuse me, not of 6y, of just y prime, because we factored out the 6, plus 5 times the Laplace transform of just y equals, and I'm going to factor out the 12 here, 12 times the Laplace transform, I don't know what's happening to my curly braces, of e to the t. Okay, so now we know, because of our our formulas that we figured out for what the Laplace transforms of derivatives are, we can say, if we remember, the Laplace transform of a function's first derivative, y prime of t, is s times that function's Laplace transform, f of s, minus that function evaluated at zero, and the Laplace transform of a function's second derivative is equal to s squared times f of s minus s times f evaluated at zero minus f prime evaluated at zero. So useful for solving differential equations because it incorporates its initial values into the transform itself. So with that, let's apply it. What we're going to get is that the Laplace transform of y double prime is then s squared times big Y minus s times y evaluated at zero minus y prime evaluated at zero plus now this term, 6 times the Laplace transform of y is s times big Y um, minus y evaluated at 0 plus 5 times just big Y equals 12. And then the Laplace transform of e to the t is going to be 1 over 1, or sorry, 1 over s minus 1. So now that we know all this and Remember this, this part is separate, it's just formulas. Now that we know this, let's try to do step two, which is to isolate the Laplace transform of y, big Y. Well, if we do that, we find that big Y, we can factor out all of our different parts. So we find that we have, here we have s squared, so s squared. We have plus 6s, so plus 6s, and plus 5y. So just plus 5. And then here we have minus s times y of 0. y of 0 is negative 1, so we can just say plus s. Minus y prime of 0 is 7, so minus 7. Minus, because this is plus 6, and then I'm just doing the minus y of 0 here. Minus 6 times y of 0. y of 0 is just negative 1, so we add 1. And then this is equaling 12 over s minus 1. Great. Now what we have is that y equals, and I'm going to do lots of, lots of algebra on this step, I'm going to add all of this to the other side, so we're going to get 12 over s minus 1 plus, alright, well first of all, 6 minus 7 is negative 1, so we add positive 1 to both sides, and then we subtract the s, and then we divide all of this by this mess right here. And just quickly, let's see, is there an easy way to factor this? It looks like there is, namely, s plus 1 times s minus 1. So, not, well, I don't know what I just said. Did I say s plus 1 times s minus 1? I meant s plus 1 times s plus 5, not 4. Mouth and brain are disconnected today. Because here we have plus 1 plus 5 is 6, and then plus 1 times plus 5 is 5. All right, but this is still kind of gross here, so let's try to fix up what we're seeing so that we have something cleaner on top. So let's take this here and know, let's do it in yellow. Let's multiply this by uh, s minus 1. I don't know why I did a small parenthesis there. s minus 1 over s minus 1. And then this is going to equal so that it fits in with this denominator. 12 over s minus 1 plus, and then this is really negative s minus 1 times s minus 1, which is negative s minus 1 squared. So this is minus s minus 1 squared 
But now we have that this is over s minus 1, 2. So we have over s plus 1 times s plus 5. And what we see here is if we can, you know, let me erase this line a little bit, it's going too low, is we get 12 minus s minus 1 squared. So we're going to get minus s squared. And then you would have a plus 2s here, but that's going to be minus 2s in this case. Or sorry, you would have a minus 2s, so it's going to be a plus 2s. And then you would have a plus 1 squared, but it's going to be a minus 1. And then we can take out this s minus 1 and put it on the bottom, where we're going to get s plus 1 times s minus 1 times s plus 5. Let me make my s's and 5's clear and distinct. s plus 5. And then if we simplify the top a bit, which, you know what, actually, if we're going to be doing partial fraction decomposition, we don't even need to simplify the top. OK. Now what we can do is we know, just before we do partial fraction decomposition, let's write out what we know. What we know is that the Laplace transform of y equals that. So our solution, y of t, is the inverse Laplace transform of, and I guess, yeah, why not simplify it, s squared, negative s squared, plus 2s, plus 11, all divided by s plus 1 times s minus 1 times s plus 5. And now we actually have to figure out what to do with all these different terms. So what we're trying to find is some fraction so that we have negative s squared plus 2s plus 11 over all of this. So s plus 1 times s minus 1 times s plus 5. Some fraction, and OK, my s's and 5's are looking the same again, so I'm going to have to differentiate. So this equals some constant, which you'll solve for later, a over s plus 1, plus some other constant, b, which we'll solve for later, over s minus 1, plus yet another constant, c, over s plus 5. So now what we can do is just apply what we know about partial fraction decomposition. So we'll multiply both sides by this denominator here, and we'll find negative s squared plus 2s plus 11 equals, and then this a. This a is going to absorb the s plus 1, but it's going to still take the s minus 1 and the s plus 5. So s minus 1 times s plus 5 plus b times, and then it's going to absorb the s minus 1, but it's going to still take the s plus 1 and the s plus 5. And then this c is going to absorb the s plus 5, so it's going to take s minus 1 times s plus 1. Great. Now we can start plugging in different values for s and getting answers. So first step could be, for example, let s equals negative 1. If s equals negative 1, then the b and the c terms are going to cancel out. So if s equals negative 1, we get negative times negative 1 squared. It's just going to be negative of 1 is negative 1 minus 2s. Uh, oh, sorry, but <laughs> I meant minus 2 because plus 2 times negative 1 is minus 2 plus 11 equals the b term goes away, the c term goes away. We're left with only a and b. So a times and then negative s minus 1 is times negative 2. And negative 1 plus 5 is 4. And then again, b and c terms go away because when we plug in s equals negative 1, then negative 1 plus 1 goes to 0, and negative 1 plus 1 goes to 0. All right, well, what this tells us is that negative 8 times a equals, this is positive 8. So lucky for us, we got a simple number. a equals negative 1. That's the first thing that we know about a. How useful. Now let's let s be a different number. Let's let s equal positive 1. Because now the a here, this is going to go to 0, positive 1 minus 1, and the c, positive 1 minus 1. That's also going to go to 0. So if we let s equal 1, then we get negative of 1 squared is still negative 1. Now plus 2, plus 11, that this is going to equal, the a is going to go away. The b is going to stay. So we're going to have b times plus 1 plus 1 is 2. And then plus 1 plus 5 is 6. And then here we're going to have plus c. So c goes to 0, though, so we don't have to add it. 
And this is nice. This tells us that 12 times b is going to equal negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1. Or sorry, plus 1. Plus 11 is 12. 12b 12 equals 12. Hey, this is great. We're getting a lot of nice numbers. b equals 1. All right, fantastic. a equals negative 1. b equals positive 1. Just one more constant to solve for. And we have a really nice way to solve for it, which is by letting s equal negative 5. Let s equal negative 5. If s equals negative 5, we have negative 5 squared is negative 25 plus 2s, so minus 10, but plus 11. Nice. So this equals, so the a is going to go away because negative 5 plus 5 goes away. B is going to go away because negative 5 plus 5 on that term right here. And then the C is going to stick around. So we're going to be left with just C now times negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. S plus 1 is going to be negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So we're left with negative 6 times negative 4. That's positive 24 times C is going to equal negative 25. All right, well, let's do it this way. Negative 11 plus 11. Sorry, negative 10 plus 11 equals positive 1. Negative 25 plus 1 equals negative 24. 24c equals negative 24. So this is really good. All around we've gotten simple numbers. c equals negative 1. What this tells us, coming back into it, because sometimes we can just totally forget what we've been doing. Oh my gosh, we're doing a differential equation with the Laplace transform after we solve the partial fraction decomposition. We learned that this fraction here that this actually equals, it is fully and totally equivalent to negative 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 over s minus 1, that's b, and this was a, now c, minus, minus 1 over s plus 5. Fantastic. Now let me just differentiate my s's and 5's a little bit. s plus 5. And now, knowing that about our partial fraction decomposition, we can solve our differential equation because now we can solve our inverse Laplace transform. So we can say this inverse Laplace transform is equivalent to the following inverse Laplace transform. And actually, you know what? Let me just copy this down the screen so that we get more space to work on it. Uh, so let's copy, paste, and phone ringing. Sorry, phone was ringing. Now, so we have the inverse Laplace transform of this, but we know that is equivalent now to the inverse Laplace transform of using our partial fraction decomposition. Our partial fraction decompo decomposition said, I copy again, useful feature, it is equivalent to this. If we take this inverse Laplace transform, what is this inverse Laplace transform? Well, we know each individual inverse Laplace transform. We can break it apart by addition. We know that the inverse Laplace transform of the first one, negative 1 over s plus 1, that's the same as negative times the inverse Laplace transform of just s over s plus 1. And we know if we have a shift in an s plus 1, that's just going to be 1 times e, so e to the negative t. If you want confirmation, it's because negative times, sorry, negative e to the negative t, the Laplace transform of this is the same as, okay, let me be a little bit neater there. Laplace transform of e to the negative t equals negative Laplace transform of e to the negative t. And this equals negative times 1 over s minus minus 1 is plus 1. And this is what we had before. So that was just a little sidetrack in case you were wondering uh, why that was the case because I was doing it kind of quickly. So we have negative e to the negative t plus e to the positive t, because we're subtracting 1, minus, and now we're adding 5, so e to the negative 5. That's our answer. It's kind of cool. Negative 5t, I mean. That's kind of cool. This is our answer. And if we I can just rewrite it to be very official, this means that our solution to the initial value problem is y of t equals negative e to the negative t plus e to the positive t minus e to the negative 5. And you can see, again, this looks very much like our form for the some kind of homogeneous solution, maybe. 
plus some kind of particular solution. So hopefully you can see the Laplace transform is a nice method, and very general also, for solving whatever initial value problem your differential equation happens to be.